That's absolutely right. I have, you know, that's a very good question and something that, that, uh, uh, that needs to be evaluated. I suspect you can override this because people can belch. So, you see, I'm not saying this is not a Nissan. This is not a replace for a Nissan. But it's something that we can do in the middle of it, in the middle, in the gray zone. We may help that sphincter, but in some situations still may override. Now, picking out who we should do it on and so forth, you know, whether we can identify the person that's likely to have an over, override the device, then he probably should get a Nissan. You know, this is where we have to get into the system and really understand the disease. But you're absolutely right. That's possible. That's possible. So it gets into how to anchor it and so forth. But this is a good question. The data out there is that people, 30% of them, are not happy. And like I say, they resist opening, those, opening their, their mind to that. But when you talk to them long enough, they'll tell you that a large number of their patients they see in their outpatient is people who are on PPIs, and are not happy. They are commonly referred by the primary uh, physician to the gastroenterologist saying he's on PPIs and has not got a good response. He has a response but not satisfied with it. So that, that's where they are. They'll, they'll admit to that. Now, you can have this, uh, you know, we can get into discussion of the Lotus trial because I'll get into <laughs> definitions and what they've done and so forth. They move things around. I mean, it's a little hard to, you know, when you look at his earlier trials, which on the open, there's a different definition. In the Lotus trial, and even the one before that, the open procedure, it was paid for by one of the drug companies. Okay, it was AstraZeneca. And that's, we appreciate that. But just let me show you how they manipulate. Okay? Every patient in that trial had to have a six-month run-in. They had to have six months on the medication to show that it was effective. That way you eliminated the 30% who didn't get an effective sustained release. And then you were randomized. You know, it should have started maybe at the beginning without that six-month run-in. But that's how it happens, see, just slightly. And if you don't, re if you don't, if you don't uh, read into the details of it, you don't understand how that's moved around. And, then, and Carl's is right about picking that out, yeah. That's getting the evidence for a pathophysiological mechanism by putting a drug in there and say, well, the drug changes it, therefore we understand that this is due to, due to a pathologic physiological mechanism. I just don't believe those things until there's data. There's just no data. I mean, it's just not there. I mean, can, it's just, you know, I have studied these, these uh, sphincter relaxations, and, and sphincter relaxations, by the way, transient sphincter relaxations, start from the bottom and go up. The sphincter opens this way. When your sphincter relaxes and you swallow, it opens from top down. They're saying that, that there's some other reflux that we don't know about that's causing this sphincter to open up. Or in your situation, you're talking about a reflux that results in pain. And those are all, they're, 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 they're nice rational conceptions, but no proof. No proof. It's an attempt to, to explain um, factors we're seeing in our clinic by a mechanism that we don't really have a lot of proof for. I mean, the worst thing is to start dumping drugs in these people with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, uh, neurological drugs. It drives me crazy. There's a lot of things in this disease, but these people I'm talking about are, are people who do respond. Remember, it's not non-responders. We're talking about partial responders, but not all the way. The reason, I'm trying to give you a logic here, the reason why they're partial responder is their sphincter is starting to go. And we've got, they're not gonna take a Nissen. We can stand here and tell the dogs come home. They're not, they're not gonna change their situation for a Nissen with its side effects. They're not gonna do that. But they'll do something, they'll do something if it's more gently and we can get it in there, and it doesn't produce side effects, and helps their problem. No. The key is selecting these patients. And, 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 and that's why you, if you're gonna be an esophageal surgeon, you gotta get in there and do the selection. You can't, you can't just have a gastroenterologist send you this case and say, go, go do it. This is, it's a recipe for disaster, unless you know your man very good, and you've had years of relationships, and, and you're, you're, you're a team, a true team, then it's a different story. Yeah, I agree with you, Jeff. Yeah.